Hello and welcome to the special town hall part of the NDTV Detol Banega Swast India campaign. Today we are saluting the COVID heroes. I'm Ambika Singh Kama. और मैं हूं संकेत उपाध्याय कोविड 19 की दूसरी लहर तबाही लेकर के आई लोगों की तकलीफ उनका संघर्ष जितना दिखा उससे कहीं ज्यादा अनसुना और अनदेखा रहा लेकिन ऑक्सीजन की कमी दवाई की कमी बेड की कमी के बीच से ही उम्मीद की किरण जगी कुछ ऐसे अनदेखे अनजाने लोग जो इस त्रासदी में और इस त्रासदी के चलते अपने बन गए जिन्होंने कोरोना की जंग में एक अहम भूमिका निभाई दे हेल्प यूनाइट इंडिया इन ग्रीफ एंड पेन बट विद एन ओवरवेलमिंग डिजायर टू हेल्प ईच अदर थ्रू द टफेस्ट ऑफ टाइम्स वी हैव सीन हाउ आवर कंट्री हैज कम टुगेदर टू फाइट द वायरस एग्जेम्पलरी वर्क इज बीइंग डन बाय ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस कॉर्पोरेट्स एंड इंडिविजुअल्स इन दीस डिफिकल्ट टाइम्स एंड अ न्यू ब्रीड ऑफ हीरोज विद एन इनविंसिबल स्पिरिट एंड डीप कंपैशन एंड एम्पैथी हैव रशड फॉरवर्ड टू हेल्प फेलो सिटीजंस आइए इन्हीं हीरोज को सराहें सल्यूट करें जिनके निस्वार्थ प्रयास से हम स्वच्छ स्वस्थ और सुरक्षित हुए मैं स्वागत करना चाहता हूं हमारे अपने एनडीटीवी के चेयरमैन डॉक्टर प्रणय रॉय का जिनकी अगुवाई में ये मुहिम जारी है और पिछले सात साल से लगातार हमारे साथ भारत को स्वस्थ और स्वच्छ कराने की इस मुहिम में कैंपेन एम्बेसडर की भूमिका निभाते हुए सदी के महानायक श्री अमिताभ बच्चन डॉक्टर रॉय इट्स ओवर टू यू वेल अंबिका एंड संकेत यू नो एज यू बीन जस्ट सेइंग वी ऑल बीन थ्रू अ रियली रियली एक्सक्रूशिएटिंग पीरियड बोथ फिजिकली एंड मेंटली एंड एंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली डीपली इमोशनली वी लॉस्ट ईच वन ऑफ अस हैव लॉस्ट सो मेनी मेंबर्स ऑफ आवर फैमिलीज एंड आवर फ्रेंड्स एवरीवन हैज बीन टू हेल एंड बैक but we are back and one thing i've noticed throughout this crisis i've not heard one person complain about the doctors the nurses and the ward staff they have been just wonderful working night and day taking risks many of them getting covid but coming back uh, within a couple of weeks just to keep our spirits high even though they are exhausted we're really really lucky uh, ambika and sanket for once again to have amitabh bachan with us amitabh thank you thank you for joining us um you're looking good uh, you had covid and i think uh, you you had a pretty i mean you were in hospital for quite a long time and you did mention that the hospital staff and the doctors nurses everybody was fantastic and not just to you to everybody right Uh, this period has been very trying for all of us and not just within our country but all over the world all over and the world. Uh, we haven't been able to find any kind of a, a positive solution to it but the fact that as you mentioned the people that have been continuously fighting this war are just unbelievable their spirit their dedication and their selflessness as i said as you said i was in hospital and you cannot believe the kind of effort they all make to make you comfortable to make you well and they don't go home 24 hours round the clock yes, yeah. they are there Amazing. in their in their suits in their attire attending to you the, the, the ward boys the nurses the staff just incredible atmosphere and what a spirit and every day not just coming and doing their work and medically but coming and encouraging you giving you hope and say don't worry everything is fine even though they know the blood reports they know the reports every day and they know things are going wrong somewhere they will never they will never say that to you all they will say is your reports are looking good we are we are well we are good and somehow you just feel nice about it right and that's what they've been doing and really creditable so sanket and uh, uh, Amika ji, Amita ji, this is superb. Absolutely, what a wonderful thought by NDTV to honor these people who really have been the backbone during this crisis. Really, it, we should all just uh, <clears throat> just close oh, yes. eyes for a couple of seconds and just thank thank each and every one of our medical staff. God bless them all. <clears throat> Thank 
God bless them. The second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic has been challenging for everyone. Thousands scramble for oxygen, hospital beds and even crematorium spots. But as a nation, we also witnessed how people realized that the need of the hour is for humanity to come together and look out for each other and selflessly help those who need it the most. India's COVID-19 heroes, real everyday heroes who despite these difficult times came forward to help. Today, let's salute these extraordinary people who have emerged as saviors, helping and saving thousands. We salute their courage and compassion. There's a sign here that says, imagine a world without COVID. I do want to imagine one. The COVID-19 pandemic second wave has brought so much pain and suffering. But during these unprecedented times, we've also been witness to acts of kindness, selflessness and bravery as people have gone beyond the call of duty to do their bit to help humanity. The ongoing wave of COVID-19 saw thousands of citizens offer help and organize into volunteer groups as the country faced an acute shortage of medical oxygen, medicine supplies, hospital beds and other essential healthcare services. SOS calls and messages flooded social media platforms, prompting regular citizens to step in and help one another. We've seen how our country has come together to fight the virus. Exemplary work is being done by organizations, corporates and individuals in this difficult time. A new breed of heroes with an invincible spirit have stood up to help fellow citizens. Some people are going out of their way to provide oxygen facilities, pack food, services and ensuring that people are not fighting these battles alone. We salute these Corona warriors, those heroes who are leading by example and helping making this world a safer, better place. the point. They were leading by example. They didn't have to do this, but they thought of doing this. I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Lakshman Narasimhan, the CEO of Reckit, as well as Gaurav Jain, Senior Vice President, South Asia, Reckit, uh, to ask uh, questions of them. Dr. Roy, it's over to you. No, I just wanted to thank both of you for joining us and for all the work you've been doing uh, this year and all these years. Um, uh, for society. Just tell us some of the some of the initiatives you've taken this time. Well, firstly, it's uh, it's an honor to be here and to partner with NDTV um, uh, and with Mr. Bakshan and all of you to salute these remarkable heroes. I mean, we're a very small player in all of this, uh, but our heart has gone out as we've seen the front line in action, the doctors, the nurses, the medical staff, but also just the remarkable number of people in the community who stood up to be counted. And so our heart goes out to all of them, you know, given what they have done. They have in a lot of ways stitched India together in so many wonderful ways. You know, in these moments in time, it becomes quite existential. You ask yourself the question, why you as a company exist? And, you know, we did, and we said we existed to protect, heal and nurture in the relentless pursuit of a cleaner and healthier world. And this protect piece became a very big deal for us, both in terms of products and product availability, but also importantly, just given you know, what we do, we have the ability with the, what we spend, what we do with our brands, to ensure that information gets out to people. There's normally one or two or three things that people can do to protect themselves. And we have actually put a lot of money behind that, including partnerships with governments around the world in order to make that happen. You know, at this point in time, it made complete sense for us to say we would take, you know, about a percent and a half of our operating profit and give it away. We've done that through a variety of things, which I can touch on over. But also importantly, in India, you know, we've spent time focused on our people, our people ensuring that they're safe in the factories, that the communities in which we live and work are safe, you know, vaccination drives, oxygen, all of that. Uh, but also, um, you know, spread the word. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, what we have done and what we've tried to do is recognize that our place is small, that even a brand as powerful as Death Hall needs to stand back and salute all these wonderful heroes. And that's what really what we've been trying to do in the last while. Uh, you played a very important role. And very importantly, Sardar Gaurav Jain. He's a Sardar at heart. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and he, thanks for he, having I mean, us, 
you've done a lot, but just tell us this idea that you had of Dettol Salutes. What exactly was that and how did it work out? Well, first of all, thanks for having us and, and it's an honor to be here with you and Mr. Bachchan uh, after, after a long time, I think. Uh, as you remember, uh, Dr. Roy, last year, I think the role of the brand we felt was education. And, and obviously, that was the right thing to do with, with hand washing, wearing a mask and keeping the social distancing. And that's what the brand tried to do, to educate as many people as possible. Um, through various campaigns that we did, and I think we spoke about one of the big ones uh, that was very successful was the TikTok campaign, which we actually reached about 120 billion views, uh, which became very big and, and it helped to educate a lot of people about hand washing, uh, which I think was a good thing. Uh, I think this year when the second wave came and we knew obviously it'll end someday, I think the role of the brand was to evolve to, to become much more than education because obviously people had been educated about the need for hand wash and masks and things like that. And I think we took on the role of, of being this harbinger of hope and, and cheer in this uh, gloom and doom that, uh, that, as you said, existed. And I think the role of brands and especially a brand like Dettol, which is perhaps one of the most trusted brands in India, it has to be to enhance people's lives, not only by protecting them from germs and illness, but also, but also to spread happiness and cheer. So, so I think the first thing that we did uh, was to have that campaign, uh, the, the anthem, which I think uh, NDTV has run. It's running very successfully. It's an anthem of hope, uh, of, of winning against COVID. And, and it's, it's sung by children and it's beautifully penned by Mr. Prasun Joshi and his team. So that was the first thing we did, but but we felt we needed something which was deeper, which which involved people. So so my digital team actually came up with this idea of uh, of using of of getting these heroes, and if we can, you know, uh, honor. If I if I know somebody who's done well, I can actually go on a website and and say that Mr. X, uh, you know, did a great job. So I will nominate that person, and we send them an virtual pack of data with the photo of that person. So not only have we have we done that virtual pack idea and we've already had 200,000 odd people nominating people for for getting a virtual pack on the social media, but we have basically taken 100 fantastic stories from all over India and put them on our pack, um, on our real physical that all liquid soap pack which is rolling out right now. This was a swarnim pahal from Dettol. I saw how people were looking at the pack on the pack. It was a big surprise in the people. Joining us now is Dr. Randeep Guleria, Director of AIMS. Thank you so much, Dr. Guleria, for joining us. Thank you so much, Dr. Guleria, for joining us. India's medical fraternity is so bravely fighting this battle against COVID, often at a great personal cost. When hospitals are overwhelmed and the system is overwhelmed, what does it mean to you as doctors to see the way humanity has responded to help each other during this pain and suffering? The last one and a half year has seen a lot of pain and suffering. Uh, it's been a time of sorrow also and many of uh, us uh, in com the community have lost someone near and dear to us. Uh, for the health uh, care workers, it's been a tough time. We've been working day in and day out, uh, trying to really help people and really re realizing that medicine is both a science and an art. So the art of medicine in terms of empathy towards your patient, in terms of caring, becomes more and more important during a, a time like this. But what has also really been a very heartening for healthcare workers is the resilience that Indian citizens have shown. They've all come together, no matter what be your background, whatever little bit one can do, they've all come together and really try to help as far as this pandemic is concerned. Whether it's supporting people uh, in terms of providing food, whether it's medicines, whether it's oxygen, or whether it's doing simple things like uh, getting masks available for people, or going to the extent of making PPEs, making ventilators. I think from industry to the common man, Everyone came together and I think this really showed the true strength of our country in terms of fighting the pandemic. You've also, uh, Dr. Guleria, recently said that we need to focus on uh, the lessons that we may have learned in the past and the possible third wave. I keep insisting on that, but uh, I just feel that if there is the possibility of this third wave, what, according to you, are the biggest lessons that we need to learn? 
So I think there is a lot of learning that we've had over the last one and a half year. Some of it is, of course, for the medical community in terms of treating patients and how best to provide care. But the biggest lesson that we've learned, I think, is between the first and the second wave. And that is what will really help us to prevent subsequent waves. What can we do right, which we didn't do right in the past? And I think two or three things. One, of course, is the importance of COVID-appropriate behavior. Because no matter what be the variants that emerge, no matter what be the new mutants that we see, if we are able to maintain physical distance, if we are able to um, wear our masks properly, and if we are able to wash our hands, and prevent crowds from forming and therefore not, not have super spreading events, then we will not allow the virus to spread. This is a virus which has human to human transmission. One person gives it to the other. There's no other way that it can spread. If we understand the importance of this and really follow COVID appropriate behavior, come forward and get vaccinated so that the more the people who are vaccinated, the more the number that get vaccinated, the less the chance of transmission the less the chance of viral replication and the less the chance of mutants developing, we will actually be able to come out of this pandemic. We will be able to have a very minimal or uh, delayed third wave. And this is what we need to do. One of the things I think uh, following on again from Amitabh Bachchan is that in a third wave, say it happens whatever, uh, November, December, January, God knows when, and God forbid it happens at all, but we want our children to go back to school. But we keep talking about vaccines only for 18 plus. Shouldn't we think about, think about our children? I mean, they are our goalkeepers, they are our future. It's like going into a cricket match without a wicketkeeper, without a football match without a goalkeeper, if we don't look after our children. So shouldn't we really look forward and, and start uh, considering vaccination of people under 18 as well? So I totally agree with you. I think uh, physical schools is very, very important for children and for college going students also. And there's been a lot of this, which has been sort of not been there. And when we talk of schools and colleges, not only about education, it's about character building. It's about getting people to have socialized, to really become good individuals, good citizens of the country. And therefore physical schools are important. Also, it really marginalizes those who don't have access to the internet or not tech savvy. And therefore, that marginalized population has not had any education for the last one and a half years. Therefore, opening schools is very important. But the other important thing is to do it in a manner that we don't allow the infection to spread and are able to protect children. I think to do that, vaccination is the strategy. Along with that, we will have to develop other measures. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine already has been approved for children. The Zydus uh, vaccine, the Zydus, Zydus Cadilla vaccine, which is made in India, which is a DNA vaccine, also has been tried in children as it has been shown to be safe. And the Bharat Biotech vaccine is also undergoing trials and hopefully by September, the approval for that should also come. The other important thing that I'd like to mention is because this issue has always come up that the third wave is going to affect a lot of children. I don't think that is true for two or three reasons. The previous waves and the ongoing uh, pandemic has not caused a severe uh, uh, infection as far as children are concerned. Secondly, a data that we looked at, a zero surveillance that we did, did as a centennial surveillance, showed that a large number of children, more than 50% of children who were tested both in urban and rural area, already had antibodies. So they had got the infection, which was mild, and they had already been protected. Research will evolve, and we will have uh, new research coming up. But the important thing is to remember that the virus is also evolving. So we have yes, to be careful yes. when we look at both how the virus evolves and right. what research comes up and whether that research is up to date with the way the virus is behaving today. Because exactly. what research we have may be a few months old, but that may not be relevant today, as we've seen with the older variant and the Delta variant. The Delta variant was much more infectious and caused this huge spike uh, that we saw in the second wave, unlike the first wave, which was with the original Wuhan uh, strain. So there is a sort of a time lag which we have to be cognizant yes, of that is and a therefore big vaccine worry. is something that we need to be vaccine is something that we need to push aggressively in children thank you so, so much dr galeria for joining us today over to you mr bachan all right uh, this is to lakshman ji lakshman narsimha ji the impact of the second wave vaccinations the medical infrastructure where do you feel are the gaps that racket can help governments around the world including india in plugging all these points 
I think it's a very <clears throat> interesting strain of conversation we've just been through. I think that um, the one thing that's clear is vaccinations are hugely important. Um, it's very important as well to really shore up the medical infrastructure. This is going to take time. In the time when that is happening, as we prepare for the third wave, it's crucial to get ready. Now, one of the things that we've realized is, is in this sort of intermediate phase, there's a lot of information that is very confusing. And it's not just about the vaccine, which is, you know, which is effective, which is not, which antivirals, correct, not, not correct. It's also in some of the practices. And what I've seen around the world is there's been a sort of a bit of a political spin on some of these activities. You know, what actions you take, don't take. You know, there's been a spin. This is not correct. That is not correct. You know, it plays into freedom. All of those, you know, very difficult questions. One of the things we did, therefore, and this is a real gap in public health, is we realized that we need to put some money behind actually coming up with some of those answers. And we set aside about $25 million in partnership with Yale, with Harvard, with Cambridge University here, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. You know, Dr. Goleri has been very involved as well with Ames, with Tsinghua in China, but also National University of Singapore. And what we've done is we've actually established a bunch of postdoctoral fellowships in every one of these schools and even more in Africa and others in order to do research around how do you ensure we get ready around the science of behaviors and we understand what works and doesn't work. So they can actually be, you know, it's not opinion, it's fact. So research that's going. The second thing we are doing is, I think the point around schools is a very good one. Uh, and I think as you know, for the last many years, we've been recognizing that building these clean habits in children is very important. Today, we stare at the fact that, you know, 20% of people wash their hands after going to the bathroom worldwide. Now, during the pandemic, the sensitivity of this went up. In some countries, over 86% said we've adopted clean behaviors. But it's very important to instill this in children. So if you take India, we are now in a million schools in India teaching clean behaviors. So when kids go back to school, there is curriculum, there's practices, there's things that we have that will actually help them behave differently. It's also true that in the U.S., you know, one of the things you find in these schools is you actually have people falling out. So in the poor parts of the U.S., where we have a big brand called Lysol, we're working with schools in underprivileged communities, over 200,000 schools around behaviors and practices. So schools are a very important place. And the third one is back to the point I made earlier about consumer behavior. I think the point Dr. Galeria made is absolutely correct, which is in this period, there are behaviors we simply must have in our toolkit and we must behave so. In order to do that, our brands play a role. And we are moving a lot of our money, so to speak, and what we spend to reinforce these messages in partnership with a lot of public health organizations and parts of government that do that. So it's about the Record Global Hygiene Institute, where we put money aside. It's about education, particularly in schools, and it's about consumer behavior and using your brands. Those are areas that we have taken on as things that we can do to partner with governments, recognizing fully vaccination and medical infrastructure become very important. Today, as we grapple against the COVID-19 pandemic, it is even more important to make the connection between health, climate, and the environment. We humans have transformed the majority of the world's ecosystems, destroying, degrading, and fragmenting terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic habitats, and undermining the services they provide. Enhancing environmental health through better air quality, water and sanitation, waste management, along with efforts to safeguard biodiversity will probably reduce the vulnerability of communities to pandemics and thus improve overall societal well-being and resilience. Today's COVID-19 global crisis is a stark reminder of the complex links between the transmission of infectious diseases and biodiversity. Biodiversity loss is associated with the transmission of a range of pathogens, while land conversion and wildlife trade bring more people into contact with potentially new diseases. 
We're hearing this term, zo zoonotic diseases. A zoonotic disease is an animal infection that's transmissible to humans that causes the disease in the humans. Could be a virus, could be a bacterium, could be a fungus or some other kind of a, an infectious agent. Whatever it is, when it passes from its non-human host into its first human, that event is called spillover, which is why my book is titled Spillover. If it spreads through a dozen or two dozen humans, we call that an outbreak. Maybe the outbreak can be controlled. If it's not controlled, if the, the virus or whatever is very transmissible and it spreads through a whole country, you've got an epidemic. If it makes it to an airport and spreads around the world, we have a pandemic, which is what we have now. All of these zoonotic diseases account for 60% of human infectious diseases. So this is not some obscure thing off at the fringe of medicine. This is central to human public health. Scientists estimate that zoonotic diseases account for three quarters of new or emerging diseases in humans. Many deadly pathogens in recent memory, Ebola, HIV, Dengue, SARS, MERS, Zika, West Nile have taken this interspecies leap. At the end of the day, human and animal and environmental health are one and the same. And that must be the learning that we take away from this terrible pandemic of COVID-19 and the tragic suffering that we're seeing around the world, including in India, of course. As we degrade uh, the natural world, we, we're chipping away at the very foundations of what makes well-being possible. That means our food, our water, the temperature regulations, economic growth, the roofs of our heads, the clothes we wear, all of that is provided by nature. So the pandemic has shown us that we really need to rethink our relationship with nature. While the origins of SARS-CoV-2 is yet to be fully established, it is clear that overexploitation of habitats and wildlife trade can play an important role in disease propagation and it is important to recognize how important it is to protect the ecosystem, to protect ourselves. All right, Mr. Narsimhan, uh, you have, I believe, a very significant partnership that is already underway and that is uh, for COP26, the UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow this November. Reckitt will be the hygiene partner for this summit. What are you looking forward to uh, achieving through your role in this summit? The COP26 is a massively important event and, uh, you know, it must happen because there's a bunch of governments, bodies, you know, institutions coming together in order to debate the future as to how we attack climate change more broadly globally. And we were fortunate, I think it's the history. I mean, we've been in India with Dettol for 80 years um, you know, over 90 years over here in the UK. And so the UK government has picked us in order to ensure that there are protocols established so that the conference can happen in a safe manner. But that to me, I think is the sort of nearing piece to it. The second piece is what Ambika just mentioned. Our, our objective there is, is really to make this connection between biodiversity and health. Um, the more we harm the environment, the sicker we are going to get. And we've talked earlier about the fact that insects live much longer. One degree Celsius uh, increase in temperature means insects live six times longer and the bite is harder and deeper. And so we have to get this right. And we're working in various parts of the world on you know, a whole bunch of decarbonization efforts, including inside our own company. But it's important at COP26 to reinforce this message of biodiversity and health. We simply must take care of the climate because if we don't, it's going to make us sicker. Thank you, Mr. Narasimhan. We will have you back on the show, of course. But for the moment, thanks so much for joining us. It's time now to meet some of our COVID warriors whose compassion and generosity has meant the difference between life and death for lakhs of Indians. Hamare saath, Delhi ka ambulance jora, Himanshu or Twinkle Kalia hai. Twinkle and Himanshu ji, aapko Delhi ka ambulance jora kaha jata hai. Aapki ambulance gambhir roop se bimar logon ko aspatal aur शवों को शमशान ले जाती रही है आप खुद कैंसर को मात दे चुके हैं तो अपनी हालत भूलकर दूसरों को मदद आप कैसे कर पाए ट्विंकल को जैसे डायग्नोस हुआ ब्रेस्ट कैंसर और उसका ट्रीटमेंट चल रहा था कीमो पहले ऑपरेशन हुआ फिर कीमो हुई फिर रेडिएशन हुआ डॉक्टर ने सख्त हिदायत दी थी कि आपको ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा रेस्ट की ज़रूरत है क्योंकि वेंस बहुत वीक हो गई लेकिन जिस तरीके से इमरजेंसी केसेस आए कहीं भा, मतलब भागदौड़ बहुत बढ़ गई लोगों की भागम भाग अस्पताल की तरफ ऑक्सीजन की कमी 
ऊपर यहाँ तक कई जगह से तो ऐसे फ़ोन आए कि दो दिन हो गए हैं डेड बॉडी को घर में पड़े हुए लेकिन उसे कोई उठाने वाला नहीं है उस दर्द के आगे ना मतलब हमारी ये कोशिश थी कि हम मरहम रख पाएं सबसे बड़ा जो सुकून मिलता है जो जो शांति मिलती है वो ये मिलती है कि हम कई लोगों का जीवन बचाने में कामयाब हो पाए डॉक्टर्स की हिदायत के बावजूद अगर ड्राइवर गया है तो मैं जा रहा हूँ एम्बुलेंस लेके इवन मैं नहीं हूँ और फिर कोई इमरजेंसी केस आया या किसी डेड बॉडी को उठाने का केस आया तो ट्विंकल खुद बेड से उठ के एम्बुलेंस ड्राइव करके आ, लोगों को हॉस्पिटल तक भी पहुँचाने में उसने संभव प्रयास किया और शवों का अंतिम संस्कार कराने में भी उसने अपनी पूरी ताकत लगा दी और जब मैंने उससे पूछा कि तुम खाना बनाने के लिए तो उठ नहीं पा रही थी तो तुम ये केसेस कैसे कर लेती हो तो उसने कहा कि पता नहीं उस समय ये एनर्जी कहाँ से आ जाती है और वो ताकत कहाँ से आ जाती है अंकल जी मैं आपसे सवाल जी, पूछना जी, चाहता जी, हूँ आपने परेशान लोगों को मुफ्त में एम्बुलेंस सेवा दी जिसका अभी जिक्र भी कर रहे थे आप जब दूसरी लहर अपने चरम पर थी लेकिन आपकी ये एम्बुलेंस सेवा दरअसल कई साल से चल रही है इसकी शुरुआत कैसे हुई उनकी एज 14 इयर्स थी जब पापा जी का रोड एक्सीडेंट हुआ तो इन लोगों ने छः से सात हॉस्पिटल चेंज किए बट कहीं भी इन लोगों को एम्बुलेंस नहीं मिल पाई तो उस समय इन्होंने ये प्रण लिया था कि अगर भगवान मेरे को इस लायक बनाए तो ये सेवा जो आज ये परेशानी मैं देख पा रहा हूँ किसी और बच्चे को नहीं देखने दूँगा या किसी और फैमिली को नहीं देखने दूँगा जब ये चीज़ें मुझे पता चली तो दिन मुझे भी बहुत प्राउड फील हुआ और 2002 में हमारी शादी हुई शादी के मंडप में भी एम्बुलेंस सजी खड़ी थी तो अब हम ऐसे ही करते हैं ई एम आईज पर एम्बुलेंस लेते हैं देन फिर उसके बाद दूसरी एम्बुलेंस ले लेते हैं कोविड के चलते भी टू से ज़्यादा केसेज आ रहे थे कॉल्स आ रही थी और 24 में से 22 घंटे हम लोग जो हमारी टीम है जो हमारे ड्राइवर्स हैं हम लोग हैं सब सेवा में लगे हुए थे ना कुछ दिन ना रात कुछ नहीं देख रहे थे बिल्कुल जी मैं अमिताभ बच्चन बोल रहा हूँ और आपकी बातें सुनकर और आपके पति देव की बातें सुनकर ये ये कहना हमारे पास शब्द नहीं कि किस तरह आपको बधाई दें आपकी तारीफ करें ये समाज सेवा जो आपने की है ये अद्भुत रही है और आप एक इतना सुंदर उदाहरण आप बन गई हैं देशवासियों के लिए कि मैं उसका बयान नहीं कर सकता हूँ बहुत बहुत बधाई आपको आपको क्या एक पूछना चाहूँगा सवाल क्या महिला एम्बुलेंस चालक के तौर पर कभी भी आपको कोई मुश्किल आई या दिक्कत पड़ी सर मेरा तो मानना ये है कि जैसे अपनी फैमिली में अगर किसी को कुछ प्रॉब्लम हो तो क्या हम उसको कैसे फर्स्ट एड देंगे तो जब किसी के साथ कोई प्रॉब्लम्स होती है ना तो मैं भूल जाती हूँ कि मैं महिला हूँ या कुछ ऐसे है तो मेरी प्रायोरिटी रहती है उसको फर्स्ट एड देना उसको जल्दी से जल्दी हॉस्पिटल पहुँचाना और मुझे कुछ याद नहीं रहता और दिक्कत जो आती है बट बच्चे मेरी दो बिटियाँ हैं और छोटी हैं बस ये है फैमिली का सपोर्ट है मेरे हस्बैंड का मुझे बहुत सपोर्ट है अगर सभी को इस तरीके से सपोर्ट मिले तो हर महिला कामयाब बन सकती है कुछ टाइम पहले अभी एक केस हुआ था मैं एक्चुअली एम्बुलेंस से किसी पेशेंट को छोड़ के आ रही थी तो कुछ लोग रोड से भागते हुए जा रहे थे काफ़ी दूरी तक एक बच्चे को गोदी में लेके उनको एम्बुलेंस नहीं मिल रही थी तो रेड लाइट पे ट्रैफिक में दिल्ली का ट्रैफिक तो आपको मालूम ही है कैसा होता है तो एम्बुलेंस खड़ी थी तो लोग आए मेरे पास उन्होंने पहले तो एम्बुलेंस देखी फिर मेरी तरफ़ देखा अरे मैम आप एम्बुलेंस चला रही हैं प्लीज़ एक बच्चे को हॉस्पिटल तक छोड़ देंगी मैंने कहा हाँ आप ले आइए कोई इशू नहीं है मैं छोड़ दूँगी जब वो लेके आए तो सात साल का बच्चा गोदी में बहुत कर रहा रहा था अपने मामा की गोदी में और उसकी मदर थी साथ में उन्होंने टॉवल में उसकी लेग को पकड़ा हुआ था टांग को और बहुत ज़्यादा खून बह चुका था उस बच्चे को तीन मिनट और बावन सेकंड में हिंदू राव हॉस्पिटल में ने इंदर लोक से हिंदू राव हॉस्पिटल पहुंचाया तो जब मैं गई वहाँ हॉस्पिटल में और जब सब थोड़ा ठीक हो गया बच्चा हॉस्पिटल पहुंच गया तो डॉक्टर्स ने मुझे कहा कि मैम आप इसको बहुत जल्दी ले आए वरना इसकी लाइफ बिल्कुल नहीं बच सकती थी क्योंकि ट्रेन एक्सीडेंट से उसकी लेग कट गई थी और आधे घंटे से वो बच्चा वहीं पर तड़फ रहा था और उसकी किसी ने हेल्प नहीं की थी तो ये तो जब मैं उस बच्चे से छः महीने बाद मिलने गई तो वो बच्चा एक टांग से आया मुझे बाहर तक छोड़ने और उसके फादर ने बोला कि बेटा असली अम्मी और अब्बू तो ये है इन्होंने तेरी ज़िंदगी बचाई है हमने तो सिर्फ तेरे को जन्म दिया है तो ये मेरे लिए जो 
बात थी ना उनकी वो अवार्ड से भी बड़ी थी और यही चीज़ें होती हैं जो मेरे दिल को छू जाती हैं और मोटिवेट हो के आगे बढ़ के मैं फिर से लग जाती हूँ सेवा में क्या बात है क्या बात है बहुत बहुत बधाई और शुभकामनाएं हम सब की तरफ से थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच ऑल राइट मूविंग ऑन नाउ टू आ नेक्स्ट कोविड हीरो दत्तात्रेय सावंत इज एन इंग्लिश टीचर एंड ऑल्सो एन ऑटो रिक्शा ड्राइवर Mr Savant thank you so much uh you run an auto rickshaw ambulance service aap muft mein ye suvidha logon ko dete hain even though you haven't been able to earn from your teaching job because of schools being closed ye aapne kaise socha ki ye seva shuru ki jaye jab main hamare maharashtra mein yani pure lockdown shuru ho gaya 15 april se tab maine socha ki mumbai ki halat bahut kharab thi सब जगह बहुत कंडीशन बिकट थी इसलिए मैंने सोचा कि मेरा ऑफलाइन ऑनलाइन बंद है अभी क्या करूं कि रिक्शा में धंधा भी नहीं है लेकिन मैं अभी सामने जो कंडीशन देख रहा था बहुत दिक्कत थी लोगों को अस्पताल जाने के लिए बहुत दिक्कत हो रही थी समय पे एम्बुलेंस नहीं मिलती थी कौन सी भी प्राइवेट गाड़ी वाला जाता था एम्बुलेंस वाले आते तो ज़्यादा मुँह मांगे दाम दे देना पड़ता था इसलिए मैंने सोचा मैं जैस जिस लमीरिया में रहता हूँ उस लमीरिया में लोगों के लिए मैंने मेरे ऐटो का इस्तेमाल करना शुरू किया ऐटो में थोड़ा चेंजेस किया और डे नाइट मैंने सेवा लोगों के लिए देना शुरू किया ये मेरे लिए बहुत सौभाग्य क्योंकि मेरी वजह से आज मैं फिफ्टी पेशेंट को अस्पताल या से घर या घर से अस्पताल सही समय पे लेके गया ये मेरे लिए भगवान से भी ज़्यादा बड़ी बात में कर सका ये मेरे लिए बहुत खुशी की बात है जी दत्तात्रेय जी नमस्कार मैं अमिताभ बच्चन बोल रहा हूँ और आपकी बातें सुन आ, करके हम सब बहुत ही आभार एक बार फिर देना चाहते समझते हैं कि ये जो आपने सेवा की है अपने मन से ये समाज के लिए और एक उदाहरण अच्छा बन जाएगा आज और लोग भी इसी तरह उनका व्यवहार इस तरह हो हमने कहीं पढ़ा था दत्तात्रेय जी कि आप थोड़े चिंतित थे आपके जो विद्यार्थी हैं स्टूडेंट्स वगैरह हैं उनके लिए क्योंकि शिक्षा जो है वो आप स्वयं देते थे उनके सामने बैठ कर अब क्योंकि लॉकडाउन हो गया है और इस तरह की व्यवस्था उपलब्ध नहीं है तो जिसे कहते हैं ना ऑनलाइन लर्निंग इंटरनेट के द्वारा आप सिखा नहीं पा रहे थे उनको अब ये फिर से एक ऐसा वातावरण बन गया है जहाँ पर बोल रहे हैं कि एक दूसरा वेव आने वाला है कोविड का तो अब आपके जितने भी विद्यार्थी हैं स्टूडेंट्स वगैरह हैं वो क्या करेंगे अब और कैसे आप ये अगर वे पत्ति मानी जाए तो इसको दूर करेंगे देखिए सर मुझे बहुत खुशी हो रही कि आपके साथ मुझे बोलने का मौका मिला है मेरे लिए सौभाग्य की सौभाग्य की बात है कि अभी ऑनलाइन ऑफलाइन ऑनलाइन चालू ही ऑफलाइन बंद हो बंद हो गया कि मेरे लिए अभी थोड़ी खुशी की बात है कि ऑनलाइन अभी शुरू हो गया लेकिन अभी फिलहाल लोग डरते हैं बच्चे स्कूल में यानी ऑनलाइन के लिए भी इसलमी रह होती है इसलिए बच्चों के साथ पास मोबाइल नहीं इसलिए बच्चों को कांटेक्ट करना पड़ता है उनके घर में जाना पड़ता है अभी दो दो चार चार बच्चे इकट्ठा करके हमें उनके आ, उनको ये पढ़ाना पड़ता है ये मेरे लिए बहुत खुश की बात है कि आज जो ऑनलाइन भी चालू है तो लोगों के पास गरीब लोग हैं बच्चे उनके मोबाइल नहीं है कुछ इसलिए मुझे वहाँ घर घर में जाकर हमें टीचर लोगों को उनको पढ़ाना पड़ता है ये अभी खुशी की बात मेरे लिए हो गई कि अभी कोरोना थोड़ा सा कम हो रहा है लेकिन सेकंड आगे की कंडीशन बिगड़ गई तो बहुत मुश्किल हो जाएगा बच्चों को पढ़ाने के लिए भी दत्तात्रेय जी जो आपने कहा ना कि व्यक्तिगत रूप से एक जो शिक्षक है वो जा करके बच्चों को पढ़ाए वो बहुत आवश्यक होता है बच्चे को थोड़ी सी साहस मिलता है उसको एक तरह से लगता है कि नहीं हमारे ऊपर कोई नज़र रखा हुआ है टीचर की तरह और आपने सही कहा कि बच्चे जो हैं इस उम्र में कोडिंग वगैरह से परिचित नहीं है और अगर परिचित नहीं है तो कैसे आगे शिक्षा प्राप्त हो तो आपका वहाँ व्यक्तिगत रूप से जाना ये बहुत ही सराहनीय है दत्तात्रेय सावंत जी आप हमारे साथ जुड़े इसके लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और आप बहुत अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं ओवर टू यू डॉक्टर सरदार गौरव इन टू इट बिकॉज ही But I just wanted to ask you, Gaurav. Um, you know, you you you've tried. You have had many ways in which you've saluted and thanked uh, our COVID heroes, uh, some known, some unknown heroes. Just explain how you selected the people 
you know, who you chose as uh, un unsung heroes? Yeah, Dr. Roy, I think uh, once we decided that we need to do something to salute them, uh, I think from a brand like Dettol, we need to be uh, sure uh, that we are giving out the right stories because obviously we don't want anybody who's undeserving to, to come in and we are not the experts in finding these stories. So so we were very lucky to to find a partner in, in a publication, a digital publication called The Better India. The whole publication I found is is basically relying on fantastic stories from across India uh, for for very inspiring individuals who've done a lot of change in society and and it's I mean COVID is one of them that we took but across across topics like education, women's empowerment, uh, children, arts and science, history, travel, uh, you name it and and they have examples and stories of people who've done massive change and I'm sure I'm sure they've brought a lot of change to society in the last so many years they've been there. So basically we went to them uh, and and those people with their people across India have curated these stories for us. And and they bought these stories after researching them and brought it to our people who have both selected these. And, and, and we've basically had a difficult decision, I think, I believe to make of choosing 100. And, and, uh, and that's how we went there. Goraji, this is Amitabh again. Um, these yep. are, of course, extremely extraordinary stories that you've been collecting. And what is really honorable is that you're posting them on your packs and uh, not just giving them a lot of importance, but perhaps inspiring many others to come forward and uh, do similar work. What kind of response did you get when people saw their photograph on your products? Um, and is there is there somewhere where we can read about these people, their stories? including the ones who sort of didn't make it to your bottles. So, Amitji, uh, one is we started the digital activation, as I said earlier. We started it last month where people can nominate people on, and you get a virtual pack. You don't get the physical pack. But that started a wave of, of obviously, feedback for us. And, and we, were, we have been overwhelmed in the last one month with all positive feedback that has come to us. I mean, I've even got letters, physical letters, but a lot of emails and and a lot of posts on our social media, Instagram or, or Facebook or sites. So it's all been fantastically positive. And, and we are very happy and thankful to people for that. And as you said, it's it's not about these 100 people. It's about spreading the message. It's about yeah. uh, spreading that positivity across society. And that that is the bigger aim. So on the pack, you have a photo and you have a four-line uh, message at the bottom of the pack, which shows uh, that, for example, for... For Twinkle G, I would assume it will say something like uh, she and her husband give a free ambulance service to COVID patients. Uh, wow. So you can see the photo and, and what they did uh, across packs. So we, we also have a website called DetallSalutes.com. So a web page called DetallSalutes.com. And, and all these 100 stories are there. Yeah, I have a few people on, on my social media. So if you could send me those stories, I'd be very happy to uh, put it out. On, on my blog, on my Twitter, Facebook. No, you know, thanks, if that thanks, can thanks for that. We will impress these people and you know, provoke more interaction. Thank you, Mr. Jain. Uh, I would like to now introduce uh, cricketer Jaydev Unakkat, who has played for India and is with Rajasthan Royals. Jaydev ji, IPL ke announcement se pehle hi aapne ye tay kar diya ki 10 pratishat aapki jo, aap jo kamayenge, aapki amdani jo hai, wo स्वास्थ्य व्यवस्था सुधारने में जो जो लोग जिनको जरूरत है उनको वो जाएगा ये फैसला आपने क्यों लिया इट वॉजेंट अबाउट कि ये आईपीएल शुरू हुआ या आईपीएल खत्म हुआ तब मैंने डिसाइड किया टू बी ऑनेस्ट हम लोग जब से कोविड शुरू हुआ है लास्ट ईयर से तब से आई थिंक नॉट जस्ट मी बट सब लोग जो लोग प्रिविलेज थे सब लोग कुछ ना कुछ हेल्प करते आए हैं But looking at the severity of the situation, when IPL started, who we were, and after that, the one month, which was very difficult for a lot of us. So, both situation and severity, we felt that we should come forward and, you know, come forward and you know, create an awareness amongst at least us who are privileged enough to be here in this position. To give them a message for them that this is the time when we are coming forward. जितनी हो सके उतनी मदद कर सके तो एक वो चीज थी जो हमारे सबके मन में थी 
not just me but uh, my family as well uh, because it's it's a, a decision that is taken in the family right so i think um that, that was the motivation that gave us uh, uh you know the uh, you know the belief that agar ye time pe hum log nahi kar payenge to uh, you know it doesn't really matter baki kitna bhi kar sake baki kitna bhi bole unakar ji was it was it very difficult for you to continue playing away from your family away from home uh, you must have been worried about them seeing what was happening around you so in that in this kind of a situation was it difficult to kind of focus on the game on the cricket match and perform to your best abilities was it Did difficult it? i think not really because uh, you know when we are out there on the field nothing else matters and uh, us as cricketers you know we are professional enough to know that you know we are responsible towards our duty of playing for our teams as well but having said that yes it was stressful at times uh, you know me um, i had covid in my family you know my mama ji suffered from it he was hospitalized my uh, wife rinni's grandmother passed away due to covid so those she was traveling with me as well in the ipl so we were away from the family and we were talking on phone to them we couldn't you know come and console anyone as well you know so those were the things that you know i think was happening with everyone because um, you know it wasn't just me i think a lot of other players were in the same situation in in our team so it was the same in all the teams and it was it was a difficult time let's not uh, uh, you know think that we were in a in a position that not just us but our families were uh, were in the bubble it was just the players who were in the bubble the families were outside of it and they were uh, a part of the struggle that the whole country faced at that time so it was a little stressful at times but not when we are out there on the field playing thank you jayadev for joining us and now let's meet our next covid hero dr harmandeep singh boparai who returned to his hometown amritsar from new york to help with the growing number of covid-19 cases after working as a frontline worker in new york during the first wave he is now training nurses and doctors regarding the covid protocol in india Tell us Dr Boparai what made you decide to place your life in New York city on hold and fly back to India to serve your country You know we've been fighting this war against this invisible enemy for more than a year now and it's a global war whether the front is New York or back here at home in Mumbai or Amritsar it's the same fight and with all that we learned and I learned with my experience fighting in in New York um if I were not able to bring it back home to india to my people at a time of crisis you know it wouldn't have been worth it so it was really a a no brainer to to come back since things got so bad here during the second wave uh, armandeep ji this is amitabh amitabh bachchan as a doctor uh, you were on the front lines of this war last year in new york this year you've been on the front lines in amritsar and mumbai how different have the two experiences been and are there any lessons from one for the other nice to speak to you amitabh ji so the the actual day to day is vastly different because we know the healthcare infrastructure is very different in new york versus in many parts of our country but there are so many similarities one of the things you quickly learn is that we all here share the same humanity and when you when you look in someone's eyes especially your patient or your colleagues and see them at their most vulnerable then you get inspired to see them as you and and you transcend the fear and that's been one of the great lessons that we've learned across and it's been one of the great honors of my life to work with people who in some cases literally given their lives to to help others and i don't think there's any greater service uh, than that That's wonderful to hear. Very very truthful, very laudable. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. एक छोटे से ब्रेक के लिए रुक रहे हैं लेकिन ये मुहिम जारी रहेगी तो कहीं जाइएगा नहीं देखते रहिए एनडी टीवी
We are saluting the COVID warriors. Our next COVID hero is Miss Ronita Sharma Krishna Reki, who has offered her breast milk for newborns who have lost their mothers to COVID. Among the many appeals for help have been appeals made on behalf of newborn infants who have either lost their mothers or whose mothers are in isolation. And we believe, Ms. Reiki, you have offered to breastfeed these newborns so that they get the nutrition they need. Ms. Reiki, how did this start? Um, hi, everybody. Um, thank, first of all, thank you very much. Um, so this all started one day when I was, um, you know, I was just sitting down and um, going through my Twitter account. And um, I read about uh, a little baby who lost his mother to COVID. And uh, there was an appeal, I think, from one of his family members that uh, they needed uh, human milk because uh, the baby was uh, a premature baby. And, uh, you know, when, there's, when it's a premature baby, a lot of them don't take formula milk. And when I read that, and I felt, because that time I was in Guwahati, my hometown, I had gone there to uh, deliver my baby. Um, and that time what happened was that, you know, cases were really increasing in Assam, in Guwahati. And I was like, uh, and I thought to myself, maybe, you know, there is some child here out here who, who, is, who must have lost a, you know, mother or must be in need of breast milk. And that is when I thought that I would also, you know, want to contribute because, you know, being a new mother with a new baby at home, I could not go out. I could not do anything. I was feeling helpless because I remember last lockdown with whatever little we could, you know, as a society, as a, as a responsible citizen, I went out and did my bit. But this time I was a new mom and I thought this is the only thing that I can offer. And I said, I just put it out on my social media saying if there's any baby in Guwahati, if you come across any baby who is in need of human milk, I am there. I will be, you know, I'll be more than willing to breastfeed that baby or I'll offer them my uh, milk. And this is uh, how this whole thing came up. Ranita Ji, this is Amitabh Bachchan. I just Namaste, sir. want to thank you and Namaskar. And really want to congratulate you and and applaud this very unique gesture on your part of uh, breastfeeding a child who has lost his mother to COVID. Thank this you so much. must have been, uh, this must have been a very difficult decision, not just for you, but for your family as well. Because as you just said, you yourself uh, were feeding your own child, your own infant. Yes, sir. Was the family in agreement with what you were doing? And are there certain risks uh, that get involved when you're feeding your own infant? Um, so I'd like to say something. <clears throat> so with the moment I uh, read this and I shared it on my social media, um, my husband came out and he read it and he's like, uh, you wrote this that you are going to offer your breast milk or you know you want to nurse a child. Are you sure you want to do this? I said, of course I am. And I, and I just looked at him and I said, are you okay about it? He said, I'm just absolutely okay about this. There is no harm. And uh, for me, the biggest thing is that uh, we say that our children must learn how to share. And when my baby will grow up one day, I will tell her that, you know, the biggest sharing that I could for, on her behalf was my milk. And uh, my family has been very, very supportive. Um, I lost my father last year when I was two months pregnant. And uh, I'm sorry. And I had my brother. So me, me and my brother and my husband, we were there in Guwahati. And they were very happy and proud about this decision. And then <clears throat> my in-laws were very supportive. Um, even they were okay about it. And um, I don't see any risk in it, sir, because as I'm nursing my child, um, of course, I have to follow a few hygiene. But otherwise, there's no risk, you know, because the way you're feeding your own child, you can feed other baby also. And uh, um, at that time, I didn't think about the risk. I didn't think about anything. All I thought was, maybe if there's any child out there in need, I can be of some help. That's about it. That's, that's wonderful to hear this from you, Ranita Ji. And I'm sure that the 
millions of people that are watching this program will, will be full of praise for what you did. <laughs> Not just what you did physically, but to how mentally you were able to cope with this and the rest of your family and your in-laws and their support. Uh, in today's world, which is fast, disintegrating is wonderful to hear somebody like you saying that how supportive your family is towards what you're doing. Thank you so much. That's really wonderful. Thank you, sir. All right. We are also joined in by Dr. Marcus and Dr. Reiner. Uh, they started Meds for More. Uh, this is a facility to collect and redistribute unused medicines. Absolutely unique. I want to welcome you two. Thank you very much for joining us. You started this initiative in May. That's about two months ago. And you've already collected. Uh, now, it's very hard to put medicines, uh, in, in, you know, in this, uh, in, in, in this way. But different medicines weighing up to 125 kilograms. And these were unused, unexpired medicines. Now, this is astounding. Can you tell us how did Meds for More begin? Thank you very much for having us. And, and let me begin by sharing that, yes, it is difficult to quantify, but we're probably approaching the one metric ton mark now. It's, uh, it's significantly increased since we last spoke. Um, you know, during the first wave of the pandemic, I was a frontline volunteer working in the slums here in the city that I live in, Mumbai. And I got to see firsthand the challenges that this virus had, both in terms of people's lives on their health, but also the livelihood effect in terms of the cost of medicines and the economics of it. And so during this wave of the pandemic, the second wave, as my wife and I were thinking how we could help people, uh, one afternoon, a member of our domestic staff, he called to say his son had been diagnosed with COVID. And he said, can I show you the reports? I said, of course, come. And as we were talking about how we may help, I suddenly realized that in the building that we live, I had three patients that I had been treating for COVID and they recently come out of their quarantine. So I put a very simple message on our building group asking anyone with any leftover meds to send it to our home. And if it was okay, then we would make it available. And that's how we saw that if one building could come together to help save one life, then just imagine what a locality could do, what a city could do, or now indeed what the country can do for herself. Well, that's, that's wonderful to hear. This is Amitabh Bachchan. Sir, Amen. this is extremely, uh, extremely noble. It's a very noble cause that you and your wife are doing and have done. And what a wonderful example you set for the rest of the world and for the rest of the people in the, within India is to go out and help people. Um, Dr. Rana, if I can just ask you, from what I've just heard, there's been a like exponential expansion in the amount you've collected and distributed. So are you thinking of going into uh, other areas besides Mumbai and going into rural areas and areas where it's more difficult for them to get medicines? Absolutely. So our mission has been to collect the medicines from uh, big cities like Mumbai. We are now in 10 other cities across India. We started in Mumbai, but we are now actually active in 10 other cities. Uh, and um, the idea is to collect the medicines from the cities where we have access, where there is affordability amongst people, and then divert these medicines towards rural areas where there is less access and affordability. So the way that we do this is very simple. We have a website whereby someone can log in and they can choose to either donate medicines or become an ambassador to collect medicines uh, for this particular initiative. And uh, from there, once uh, the, the collection has happened, we have four to five collection centers in every city that are a part of Meds for More. And from these collection centers, our medicines go to NGO partners who we have tied up with. And from there, they go to either charitable trusts, which uh, service slums, or to, the or to primary health centers in the rural areas. Uh, and then from there on, they reach the people who need them the most. Excellent. Excellent. I just want to Excellent. ask one thing. Uh, these medicines that you collect, is there some process that you have which verifies the authenticity of the medicine? And how do you go about it? I mean, you got, you know, you know, kilograms of medicine with you. It must be a very difficult task to be actually 
looking at them, making sure that they're genuine, making sure that the expiry is not over. Uh, this is a, a, a management nightmare. Yeah, sir, absolutely. I, I never imagined uh, in med school that I would ever be helping set up a platform with reverse logistics and handling something of this type of scale. But what we're really proud of is the fact that, you know, we've achieved this through the great support of so many partners, you know, partners like Uber, who help with this transportation, we've got pharmacy partners, we've got clinic partners, we've got NGO partners. So there are literally thousands of individuals who are involved in this entire process uh, with regard to only donating number one, unexpired medicines and number two, unused medicines. You know, we're not asking anyone to go out and buy new medicines. That's not the point at all. And in a country like India, where 45% of the healthcare spend out of pocket is the cost of medicine, where every year nearly 50 million people are pushed below the poverty line because they can't afford their healthcare bills and where over 500 crores of medicines are wasted. This is a economic uh, benefit. This is a health benefit. It's also an environmental benefit. We urge people not to go out and buy these medicines. That's a very important part of what our initiative stands for because it's also about reducing waste and then creating the impact. So we have to send the medicine to the collection center. That's or right. there is a process where they come and collect it from you. No, we, we, have, we have that as well. Out. So on the website, if you prefer not to send someone from your home or visit, right. we've got the reverse pickup. We've got a coupon code, which our partner provides, uh, yeah. giving you a discount. So people can have it picked up from their homes as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Marcus and Dr. Reiner, for joining us today. And now let's see, like India is expressing its gratitude to these everyday heroes, heroes who helped unite India in grief and pain, but with an overwhelming desire to help mm. each other through the toughest of times. Their kindness and bravery is surely an inspiration to each one of us. I have <laughs> आज मैंने इंसान के रूप में भगवान देखा है हिमांशु जी और ट्विंकल जी थैंक्स टू देयर सर्विस मैं आज अपनी वाइफ को अग्नि दे पाया वरना शायद आज वो नहीं हो पाता फ्रॉम द बैंक्स ऑफ मदर गंगा आई एम ग्लैड टू ऑनर एंड अप्लॉड ऑल ऑफ आवर इंडियाज कोविड हीरोज इट इज थ्रू दिस स्पिरिट ऑफ सेल्फलेस सर्विस India shows its true strength. In this situation, they are helping and they are providing these things, and we are happy for that. Thank you so much. <laughs> की दूसरी वेव आई और उस दूसरी वेव के अंदर कहीं ना कहीं सभी लोगों ने अपने लोगों को खोया ऐसे में मैं उन तमाम सब लोगों को सलाम और दुआ करता हूं कि जिन्होंने फ्रंट पर रहकर लोगों की मदद करी इट्स स्केरी टाइम व्हेन वर्ल्ड स्टूड स्टिल एवरी ह्यूमन बीट रिच और पुअर हैड नो फ्रीडम our hearts filled with wishes every covid hero deserves lots and lots of love salute to every covid super we are thankful to all the covid heroes literally hum log to kuch hi heroes ko jante the jo filmon mein kaam karte hain but they are the actual heroes jo apni life pe khel ke aur wo hame हमें बचाने की कोशिश कर रहे थे और आई जॉइनिंग अस राइट नाउ इज डॉक्टर वी के पॉल हेड ऑफ द नेशनल कोविड 19 टास्क फोर्स मेंबर ऑफ द नीति आयोग हेल्थ एंड आल्सो द चेयरमैन ऑफ द बोर्ड ऑफ गवर्नर्स ऑफ मेडिकल काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया वी आल्सो हैव डॉक्टर संगीता रेड्डी शी इज द जॉइंट एमडी ऑफ अपोलो हॉस्पिटल्स डॉक्टर पॉल क्योंकि आपकी हिंदी जबरदस्त है तो मैं कुछ सवाल हिंदी में पूछना चाहता हूं 
जिस किस्म की स्थिति हमने दूसरी लहर में देखी उससे क्या कोई बड़ी सीख है जो हम ले सकते हैं क्या एहतियात जनता बरते या क्या एहतियात और तैयारी सरकार रखे ये सारी बातें जो आपने कही यही बहुत बड़ी सीख है हमने सेकेंड वेव से ये सीख ली है कि कभी भी अपनी गार्ड हम लोअर नहीं कर सकते वी कैन नॉट लोअर आर गार्ड दिस वायरस इज वेरी स्मार्ट वेरी मिस्टीवियस इट कम्स इन वेव यूरोप इज एक्सपीरियंसिंग नाउ एंड अर्ली अप राइज वंस अगेन वी स्टिल हैव अ लॉन्ग वे टू गो एंड टिल सच टाइम दैट वी आर प्रोटेक्टेड ह्यूजली विद वैक्सीन कवरेज ऑफ अ हाई ऑर्डर वी हैव टू बी even more vigilant even beyond that perhaps there is a journey to be covered so the biggest lesson of the two waves that india has experienced and more than that the world has experienced is do not lower the guard what does it mean it means individual behavior above all if i wear the mask i am protected and when i am protected the virus does not go through me to somebody else it is my duty as individual to myself but then it is also my duty to do so for my family member for my community for my nation for my society that is individual responsibility likewise to maintain social distancing to avoid crowds to create situations which spread the virus because virus loves parties virus loves human beings like virus loves crowds at the system level optimum testing contact tracing isolation of patients isolation of positive cases containment zone so that we contain the virus in a locality in a localized manner do not allow this virus to go to other parts of your city or the village and then above all to be ready fully ready and over ready to look after patients when they become sick and to be ready in that sense would mean that our facilities are ready our ambulance systems are ready we have enough intensive care units and we have enough uh, um, uh, you know uh, care that can be provided human resources are available but also we learned that there is a real place for home care in the first wave as well as in the second wave that a large number of people can also be looked after at home and then when we provide support two individuals in home care through telemedicine through reassuring words of the doctor on telephone it can also save lives it assures people and also it assures that families remain in touch with their family members who are positive protect themselves and also make sure that the care is provided dr rati there is really no way to predict any of this but what kind of impact are we looking at in the event of a possible third wave both medically as well as economically uh i must admit that anything that we say about the third wave is calculation speculation yeah. but the underlying reality it is that it is almost inevitable but to a large degree mitigatable and this ability to mitigate not just the numbers but the impact depends on a series of things the number of people we have vaccinated our ability to communicate the whole aspect and the importance of this covid appropriate behavior or the fact that the virus loves crowds like dr paul was saying i think also we need to continue to look at the science behind the nature of the virus are there more genetic mutations what are the variants how do we have to be more careful about it what do we do about individuals who had been vaccinated but now their immunity is coming down once again do you need a booster shot what type of shot uh, and has the immunity of those who have been infected already has that come down so all these factors are complex but need to be continuously monitored and a combination of this scenario is really what will prepare us for the third wave in addition to of course the most important thing which is medical readiness the people the infrastructure the medicines the oxygen these are lessons we've learned and they're lessons that we must translate into infrastructure and readiness on the ground so that not a single life is lost there is so much to be done and so many people ready to do it so you know programs like these just enable a readiness inspire people to come together 
to stay more alert and to keep our country and our people safe. Uh, thank you for all your views that you've just uh, spoken of. Uh, I just want to add a bit to a discussion and some points that I questioned earlier on about uh, hesitancy to accept uh, the, the workability, the authenticity of the vaccine, etc. You know, I had the privilege to uh, be appointed through the United Nations to work on uh, polio immunization in India. And uh, that was a huge task because we faced all kinds of problems. People uh, not wanting to believe that these two drops uh, of, of the polio vaccine can uh, help them. But, you know, it took us almost eight years. And today, very proudly, we can say that India is polio free. But how can we clear up this misinformation and the hesitancy around the COVID vaccine. So, Amitabh ji, I think uh, your iconic presence uh, in the polio campaign is very well documented in that you helped break the hesitancy. I think we need you once again and many others right. to spread this message that. Yes. that, you know, we that the vaccine is critical. We have to break the hesitancy and everybody has an episodic story. My cousin took two doses and still got COVID. But I will say that even if people get COVID after taking two doses, the impact of the virus is much, much less. And in a study conducted in Apollo Hospital on our own employees or our Apollo family, we found that of the 95% of people who got COVID despite two vaccinations, we were thankfully had not a single person who either had died or either had to go to an ICU. So we need to spread the message that vaccine keeps you safe from the bad effects of the virus. And, and that is the single message. We cannot say that you will not get COVID after taking the vaccine because that's where credibility goes down. We must be very factual. And factually, it can protect your life by taking a vaccine. As uh, Sangeeta ji was saying, the severity of it is a lot lesser. Correct. And that That's needs true. to be told. Okay, you may, not, you may not again get it or you may get it again, but it may not be as severe as it was and you will be saved. And that's the other point that I was talking to uh, NDTV earlier on, is that one of the things, uh, Pranay, that we need to talk about is what is the mortality rate and percentage that is present in India today? And how does it compare with the rest of the world? And I can tell you that we are doing a thousand times better than the rest of the world. And everyone thinks that we are the villains, we are the culprits. We are not. India is great. And we are able to do that. Don't compare us to the rest of the world because the rest of the world does not compare with the mortality rate that India does. And that credit thanks to goes our to our... That's thanks to our doctors, our frontline warriors, who are able to achieve this kind of work. That's what we need Wonderful. to say. Yeah. Very and, true. and I Very thank true. you on behalf of all the healthcare workers for acknowledging that, Amitabh ji, because everyone has worked so hard. Dr. Paul, as well as Dr. Reddy, thank you very much. I think it is very, very... The, the whole gist of what has been said right now is Sahi Jankari, Sateek Jankari. You want to end vaccine hesitancy, give the right information. Right. Don't tell people, just take it. It'll save your life. No, give the right information. I think that is very, very important. All right, joining us now, uh, Aditi Hazra, Associate Epidemiologist at uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital. For our viewers watching tonight's show, uh, Dr. Hazra, can you explain to us what genome sequencing is? Because, again... Uh, at the core of what is happening is information and a lot of people get confused as to what really this is and why is this very, very important with regard to the virus that causes COVID-19? Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. It's good to be with you. Genome sequencing allows us to look at all the 30,000 pairs of letters that make up the virus's sequence. As the virus spreads, it can mutate. Most mutations are not harmful, but some variant strains arise, and these variants can have a mutation in a critical region of the spike protein of the virus 
that can make it more transmissible, that can make it evade treatment and impact vaccines. But what we know is, as was just said by Dr. Reddy, the vaccine is effective. It is a shot of hope and a shot of science. We need the vaccines, and with the vaccine, the variants can be defeated. But what sequencing allows us to do is to track it, to say where is it spreading, how to identify new variants, and then we can control those specific areas. And we can also have clinical sampling to allow us to know how, if, if it's affecting a certain age group, people with a certain comorbidity, or um, certain symptoms are more severe. So that is the importance of genome sequencing to better track, identify, and control the variants. Aditi Ji, this is Amitabh Bachchan. Thank you so much for joining us and, Thank you so and giving much. us all the inputs. I have to admit that uh, uh, I'm not so knowledgeable or intelligent enough to know uh, what uh, genome sequencing is. And uh, of course, uh, that is something that I hope to learn after this program. But how can we tell this to a common man? Because we know and we, that you believe also that this kind of genome sequencing or viral surveillance is something you're already looking into and you want to scale it up in India through your voluntary group called India COVID SOS. But how will this work? How will you be able to explain to people? How will you explain to the common man what this means. Thank you, Amitji. It's such an honor, sir, to be with you. I would first say that the health of each of us depends on the health of all of us. And what genome sequencing is, is it tells us a story about the virus. The virus is made up of letters, and it has a spelling error that makes it more contagious. So we need to know where is it more contagious. You have a grandchild. I have a niece. They are too young to be vaccinated at this time. So we need to protect them by understanding the variant, which one is spreading faster, and how we can control it. So that is why we need to do the genome sequencing to track, identify new variants, to understand the behavior of the variant, and if it's affecting certain ages or certain populations more, and then we can control it. If it's in one part of the country, if it's in a rural part of the country, then we can implement or bring resources to that region. And what we know is that majority of the sequencing has been done in the city. My goal is to help scale rural surveillance and, and to have more representative sampling throughout the country. It is just like getting a diagnostic test then that sample is sent for sequencing. So the diagnostic test tells you if the virus is there. The sequencing tells you the entire storybook of the virus. And one page is mutated or ripped out. So that is what we are trying to fix. Let's say we're running a race. You want to know which one is running faster. So that's what I would say. We are trying to catch the one that is running the fastest. Thank you very much, Ms. Hazra. Uh, for that uh, detailed information. Joining us now, Nobel laureate Kailash Satyarthi, as well as Dr. Amit Sen. He's a child and adolescent psychiatrist and director and co-founder of Children First. We're also glad to welcome back Lakshman Narsimhan, CEO of Reckitt. Kailash ji, I want to first come to you. It's hard to understand where one can even begin to grasp what this pandemic has done to our children. बच्चों की मनोस्थिति किस तरीके से हुई है प्रभावित हुई है इस इस महामारी के चलते उसके बारे में कल्पना अकल्पनीय है ये मेनी किड्स हैव बीन ऑफन बाय कोविड एंड दिस इज अ कॉन्वर्सेशन दैट वी हैव हैड इन द पास्ट आल्सो यू बिगैन यू नो टॉकिंग अबाउट इट फर्स्ट यू ड्रू अटेंशन टू दिस फर्स्ट इस पर ध्यान कैसे दिया जाए कैलाश जी जब ये पूरा मुद्दा ऑर्फन बच्चों का हमारे सामने आया और हमने उठाया और बाद में केंद्र और राज्य की सरकारों ने भी उसे लिया तो हमारे पास एक ये मई की बात है मई के शुरू की एक लड़की एक किसी मोहल्ले से फोन आया कि एक आदमी का स्वर्गवास हो गया है वो कोरोना पीड़ित थे और उनकी लाश पड़ी हुई है उनके तीन मासूम बच्चे बिलख बिलख कर रो रहे हैं कोई घर में जाने की हिम्मत नहीं कर रहा ना कोई रिश्तेदार ना कोई पड़ोसी ना कोई 
दाह संस्कार करने वाला है ना कोई बच्चों की खोज खबर लेने वाला है पूरा दिन हो गया है रात को हमको ये खबर मिली किसी तरह हमारे साथियों ने कुछ स्थानीय लोगों का इंतजाम किया और आ, उनका क्रमेशन हुआ दूसरे दिन सुबह बच्चों के खाने पीने का इंतजाम किया गया कुछ और चंदा इकट्ठा करके इंतजाम किया लेकिन जो ट्रामा उन बच्चों को जो सदमा उन बच्चों को मिला पूरे दिन पिता की लाश के साथ रोते हुए और कोई रिश्तेदार कोई बाहर का आदमी उनके पास नहीं आ रहा था ये जो ट्रामा है जो बच्चों पर असर है आई हैव बीन सेइंग राइट फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग दैट दिस इज नॉट ओनली ए हेल्थ क्राइसिस दिस इज नॉट ओनली एन इकोनॉमिक क्राइसिस दिस इज द क्राइसिस ऑफ एंटायर सिविलाइजेशन this is the crisis of childhood this is the crisis of innocence this is the crisis of future of the entire generation in the world and we have to deal it with that sense of urgency for our children hum log is crisis se nikal jayenge lekin kya hum un bachchon ko piche chhod kar aage badhna chahte hain kya ye insaniyat hogi kya ye sabhyata hogi ki hamare bachche piche chhod jaye and as we know that dozens of millions of children in the world would not be going to come back to their classrooms dozens of millions of children would be pushed into child labor slavery trafficking child prostitution some of them could be picked up by some extremist forces or some terrorist forces uh, using their or exploiting the vulnerability of the children ye halat hamare duniya ke bachchon ki hai and this pandemic has exposed and exacerbated the injustices and inequalities which were prevailing in our society it has also exposed that how apathetic we are how indifferent we are for our children not only in india i am talking globally i work across 140 150 countries for many many years and i know i have been in contact with my partners all across the world uh, and this is the situation of our children dr amit sen this is amitabh bachchan i just want to uh, uh, Just take up a little further on what we heard just now from Kailash Ji. Uh, I had the great privilege to spend time with him on one of my shows earlier on some years ago, where he mm-hmm. he briefed us and told us and educated us on what was going through and what was happening to the children, and how he himself and his entire team had to struggle, sometimes in very difficult circumstances, to meet up these children to save them. And the point that he has brought up today. is i think extremely important very valid the children are going through some kind of a psychological trauma as well along with the trauma of the disease how do you as a doctor feel about the psychological impact that this is happening and the mental health of our children so uh, thank you mr bachchan for put you know putting the question so well and i'm inspired indeed by kailash ji's uh, um experiences and the way he's in, encapsulated the whole uh, uh pandemic and the impact on children and i uh, completely resonate with this idea that uh, this pandemic is uh, it, is a global disaster and uh, uh, unlike other global disasters like we've had massive disasters like the tsunami and the gujarat earthquake this is not a one time thing because those disasters often uh, come and create havoc and death and destruction and then leave us to to at least pick up the pieces and rebuild our lives but this is just ongoing and it it never seems to end every time we try to raise our heads it knocks us down so indeed the uh, the experience of everybody particularly of children adolescents teenagers has been traumatic deeply traumatic particularly those who are in the forefront of um, facing it whether it it is through um, this, you know deaths and devastation in the family or complete uh, loss of livelihood and so on so it is um, uh, imperative that we try and look at it from different lenses uh, so there are two things that, that i would like to highlight and uh, the the knowledge or the ideas that i'm bringing here is really a collective knowledge that i've we've gathered uh, in the last one and a half years in working with uh, families with children with schools and colleges with ngos and some government agencies and what we have figured is that uh, it is not just the fear anxiety and the devastation that the virus has caused in our lives but it is also the lockdown which has had a equally severe impact on children's uh, mental health and development so the the first bit 
Of course, you know, particularly in the second wave when uh, the, uh, you know, many, many young people have encountered death in such tragic circumstances of parents, of people they loved. Um, they have, of course, got impacted deeply and there is deep seated anxiety, trauma. However, that's not the end of it. You know, uh, when this passes and when the dust settles, then the symptoms of depression, anxiety, substance misuse, self-harm behaviors, all those things start surfacing. And we have seen that rampantly. Very tragically, we have lost some young people to suicide in, in the last few, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, in, in, in the last few months. And, and, and these are kids we have known over a period of time, uh, families we've worked with, NGOs that we've worked with. This might have a deep-seated impact which may, which may begin to unfold over months, years and generations. We have seen that in you know, big wars and, and the famines and perhaps in our partition, that when people encounter death, destruction and such helplessness, uh, then, then the aftermath of that can be very, very prolonged indeed. And we have to be mindful of that. The second part, of course, is the lockdown itself, which has caused children from, you know, staying at home, not having any avenues or connections with the outside world and school, which is a vital, you know, part of their growth and development. I mean, how do children grow up? You know, young, the little kids will go up, um, you know, go out to the parks, they will go to their uh, play school, they will interact with other kids, they will learn how to play, learn language and social skills. For the last one and a half years, none of these kids have had that. The slightly older kids are the ones who are probably, you know, looking forward to going back to their football coaching or their, their guitar class, the new friends that made. And the, yet the older ones, you know, the adolescents and the teenagers, they are missing out on the rites of passages, you know, going from one phase to the other. Like so many, I mean, millions of children who completed school in the last couple of years have not been able to go to college. And that's devastating for them because that's something, it's a milestone. It's a, it's a part of their lives which makes their identity, forms their personality. I wonder sometimes as to what kind of courage or what kind of bandwidth or emotional safety they might be able to feel to take, uh, you know, the, uh, the challenges in, in, the, in the coming world. This is the first COVID-19. There was something that happened, then there was another COVID-19. And now there is such a possibility that there is another COVID-19. एक थर्ड वेव जो है वो भी चलने वाली है आपको क्या लगता है कि हमारे जितने भी बच्चे हैं और जिनके बारे में आपने अभी हमको उनका वर्णन दिया तो बड़ा ही दयनीय था और ये जो अब बच्चे आने वाले हैं या अगर ये तीसरी लहर भी अगर दुर्भाग्यवश आ जाती है तो हमारे जो बच्चे हैं उनको कैसे अवगत कराया जाएगा कि ये क्या है उनके बचाव के लिए क्या करना होगा कैसे उनको संभाल के रखें उनको शिक्षा दें कि क्या है क्या सोचा है आपने इसके बारे में कैलाश जी सब लोग कह रहे हैं कि इस लहर का सबसे ज्यादा असर बच्चों पर पड़ने वाला है मैं एक ही बात कहना चाहता हूं कि हम पहले से इस बात की तैयारी रखें कि अगर बच्चों को नुकसान पहुंचाने वाली ये लहर आती है तो हम उससे बचाव कैसे करेंगे सरकारी स्तर पर भी सामाजिक स्तर पर भी मैंने कई बार कहा है और आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी को पत्र लिखकर कुछ सुझाव दिए थे जिसमें हमने कहा कि ये जितने भी चाइल्ड केयर होम्स हैं पूरे देश में सरकार के और गैर सरकारी इंस्टीट्यूशंस सी जिन्हें कहते हैं जहां 10 20 50 100 200 500 बच्चे रहते हैं उन में सबसे पहले ये सुविधाएं और साधन मुहैया कराई जाए ऑक्सीजन के सिलेंडर्स और ऑक्सीजन के जो इक्विपमेंट्स हैं उनसे लगा के दवाइयाँ और बाकी चीज़ें वहाँ के कर्मचारियों को कार्यकर्ताओं को इस बात के लिए प्रशिक्षित किया जाए कि अगर एक भी बच्चे पर असर होता है तो बाकी बच्चों को कैसे बचाया जाए कम से कम एक अस्पताल हर जिले में इस तरह के बच्चों के लिए रखा जाए अगर अभी से लहर का असर होता है तो वहाँ वो सुविधाएं हों वो डॉक्टर्स नर्सेज इस बात के लिए तैयारी रखें खासकर जो बच्चों के चिकित्सक हैं उनकी तैयारी होनी चाहिए और अगर तीसरी लहर नहीं भी आती तो भी अगर हर जिले में एक बच्चों के लिए अस्पताल डेडिकेटेड हो पूरी तरीके से तो बच्चों की बीमारियों का इलाज उसमें संभव हो सकता है एक और बात मैंने प्रधानमंत्री जी से निवेदन किया और देश के प्रत्येक सांसद को अलग से चिट्ठियाँ लिखी अलग अलग चिट्ठियाँ लिखी और कहा कि इस समय जो हालत हुई है ऑक्सीजन की 
हॉस्पिटल बेड्स की दवाइयों की हर तरह की जो मारामारी पिछले दो महीनों में हमने देखने को मिली अप्रैल मई के महीने में उससे हमें समझ में आता है कि स्वास्थ्य के मामले में एक बहुत ही बोल्ड और एक बहुत ही बुनियादी सुधार की जरूरत है और इसके लिए सबसे अच्छा मौका अभी है कि हम स्वास्थ्य को मौलिक अधिकार का दर्जा दें हमारे संविधान में कई जगह देखने को मिला है कि युवाओं में नौजवानों में बच्चों में स्टूडेंट्स में उन्होंने सोशल मीडिया का जबरदस्त इस्तेमाल किया है उनके अंदर का जो करुणा का सागर है बाहर निकल के आया है एक दूसरे के मदद के लिए खासकर जो बच्चे इधर उधर की चीजें सोशल मीडिया पे करते थे वो प्लाज्मा ढूंढ रहे थे वो ऑक्सीजन ढूंढ रहे थे वो बेड ढूंढ रहे थे ये हमारे देश की ताकत है और युवाओं के भरोसे पर हम लोगों को बड़ा कार्यक्रम बनाना चाहिए स्कूलों की बात भी है कि अब स्कूल जब खुलते हैं तो स्कूलों को व्यवस्थित तरीके से खोलने का एक रोड मैप बनाया जाए एक सरकार को रा, राज्य सरकारों को भी और केंद्र सरकारों को भी रोड मैप बना चाहिए कि एक स्मूथ बहुत बड़ी और चाइल्ड फ्रेंडली तरीका हो उसका दटेंशन दैट कैलाश इज ड्रॉइंग इज एक्सट्रीमली एक्सट्रीमली इम्पोर्टेंट इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट and it needs to be addressed on an almost like a war footing because we are going to lose our next generation if we don't do that so lakshman you know thanks again for coming and uh, you know doing so much for this campaign uh, you know we've seen what can happen when you're caught unawares by you think you got victory and then another wave happens then another wave and it seems to get worse and worse now what is racket and debt all doing to prepare itself and all of us and the communities it works for uh, with this possibility of a third wave coming what are you planning right now as we have looked at the situation and we've learned a lot over the last 18 months and we think about how we get ready for it we really sort of break broken it down into three parts uh and i think the the model we're using for ourselves also applies in some ways to the various communities that we are engaged in Uh, the first one is really to prevent or slow things down and that comes through uh, the behaviors for us ensuring our brands communicate the right behaviors so people learn in a simple manner the other thing is ensure product is available but also that we partner with a variety of organizations be it schools be it local communities to ensure people understand what the behaviors are that are needed in order to slow things down while we get what's done right with regard to vaccines what's done with regard to uh some of the antivirals that are being developed and schools are a real place of focus for us in terms of how we navigate that the second element of this is even though we may prepare and we will slow things down sometimes there's an unexpected variant that could come and you've got to in some ways respond and there we've got to move at speed now last time when all these ha- things have happened you know we've sort of use just the sheer energy of people the entrepreneurship of people but at this point in time we we have learned a lot we've learned to be much more organized about it and we focused on our supply chains to ensure they're agile they're quick and the investments have been made so we can respond quickly furthermore because we've learned things about how to respond the playbooks that we have built are being shared around the world so that's the second area which is how you respond and respond quickly And the final thing is you know one of our core values as a company is joining forces uh to win bigger and what we mean by that is we have got to ensure that we've got the fabric the partners the communities other companies all together to strengthen you know the core fabric that we have because the response cannot be done by one company or by one institution we all have to come together we all have to be united so it's about preventing and slowing it down it's about responding very quickly when things go wrong and third is just ensuring that we're building connectivity through information i think i love the push on you know clean up the information provide it to people so they know what what really matters versus what versus what, what doesn't and you can't do it alone you have to partner with various organizations including with people like you at ndtv to ensure that people understand what needs to happen that's how we are preparing for any eventuality right um, amitabh i just wanted to um, you know you've been talking a lot and very correctly about a possible third wave and that we haven't beaten this uh enemy yet and it uh, it takes me back to something that a message that was sent to us by the great muhammad ali the greatest boxer of all time 
And you could call this virus a rope dope virus. Why? Remember in 1974, the biggest fight, Ali versus Foreman in Zaire. It was called Rumble in the Jungle. And Foreman was a formidable, formidable uh, enemy. And what happened? What did Ali do? Every time Foreman came at him and you know, punched him left, right, he just lay still. And he said, watch out for people like that. The virus is lying still like this. And we are punching and then it's not moving. And when Ali didn't move, Foreman said, oh, he's finished. I've, he just kept bashing him. He said, I've, I've finished Ali. But while he was punching him, he got fatigue. Lockdown fatigue sort of thing. He got fatigued. He thought, I've smashed Ali. He thought, like we think we smashed the virus. And Foreman lowered his guard and Ali smashed him and knocked him out. The virus is called, a good name for it is rope a dope. Ali roped a dope. And if we think that we go on smashing and we can now relax, the virus is forgotten, it's just lying low. And Ali's message is never, never take these kind of people for granted. These kind of viruses, these enemies for granted. Yeah, really? thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Pranay, for this. Uh, we do remember this incident. You remember actually, it, yeah. Yeah, actually, rope dope was a term he used because he was taking the assistance of the boxing ring rope. rope. Yes, yes. He would he always swing back, back onto them and yes. then swing back again. That's how Correct. the term came about. Correct. But yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. He, he's done many wonderful things and giving great examples. But you know, before we end, I, I just want to go back to uh, Prana, something that I, I mentioned earlier on that uh, uh, we as a nation are equipped and well equipped to handle all kinds of situations. But I just feel that sometimes we are looked down upon and a lot of the other nations, the Western world, et cetera, think that we need a lot of help and we need a lot of assistance. Yes, we do. When, when they needed help, we went out and helped them. And now we hear all kinds of, uh, you know, negativity that is prevailing. And that is wrong. We are capable of handling ourselves. So we are India and we are Indians and we can fight. But don't take us, you know, into that negative zone where, yeah. uh, where you talk about us uh, indiscriminately. Uh, that's, that's not right. All kinds of campaigns are being done, shows are being done. Let's work for India. Let's help them out. Let's do this, do that. Yeah, we, we always accept and welcome help. But we are capable of looking after ourselves as well. And within our own strengths, we are able to handle this. With that, we've also come to the end of this program. Aap sab ka bahut bahut dhaneva. Is karikram ko karne ke piche ka jo maksad tha, wo sirf yahi tha ki sangharsh ke is wakt mein, जब चारों ओर सिर्फ दुख और परेशानी दिखती है तो यह जानना बहुत जरूरी है कि कुछ लोग फरिश्ते की तरह उम्मीद बनाते और बढ़ाते हैं उनकी अच्छाई का जिक्र करना यह भी हमारा कर्तव्य है आप सभी का बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू ऑल फॉर जॉइनिंग अस एंड हियर सेलिब्रेटिंग एंड एक्नॉलेजिंग द एफर्ट्स ऑफ इंडियाज़ ट्रू हीरोज़